Hey everyone, Sekriasen here, and today I'm going to be talking about landscape painting, and uh, I've been asked to do a tutorial on landscape painting, and I really didn't want to, and I still don't, because I'm not good at it, and I don't enjoy it, and I only know a little bit about it, and you know that saying, little knowledge is a dangerous thing, well, I think I'm very dangerous <laughs> when it comes to landscape painting, but fine gonna just show what little I do know and if it helps it helps okay so the first thing I know or my observations and I don't know probably it's all wrong but anyway wider is better usually landscapes are hard for me anyway when I do them in like square compositions uh, 16 by 9 is nice and you can just set your ratio fixed ratio like 16 by 9 and then do that like that's nice but even wider is better for me again everything I say is just from my personal experience and my observations it's easier to work with things like this or um, you could also do like tall ones like that just looks a lot better than square ones so um, there's that so the next thing I would encourage people to do is do thumbnails a lot. And thumbnails are really quick, and they should be quick anyway, and simple. So just zoom out and think of the the area you want to fill. Actually, I want to cover one thing before that. Um, okay, so let's say this is our canvas, right? Well usually when I do landscapes I either have a high horizon like up here really high or really low so this would be let me use a different color so this green area let's just say that's the ground and the rest is the sky either I'll keep it like that with a lot of sky and a little ground or I'll have a lot of ground and a little sky and like this one it's more like we're looking down it uh, at the at the image right because horizons higher so our vantage point is higher so that's the thing and then when I do thumbnails I just have that in mind so it's like okay I'll start with like let's say a low let me use a different color again a low horizon and I'm not gonna don't think of the color as color just think of it as the shape. Okay, I don't know if that made any sense. So, I'm just gonna colorize the background frame thing so we have a colored frame so that I can just use black. Okay, so you're just thinking about the shape. So, here's where my land is. And then I don't know what I'm gonna have, but I usually make it so whatever it is, there's still mostly sky or mostly land if I do. It the other way and so maybe I have like some trees here it's like okay some trees but see mostly it's still it's still sky and so you want an uneven ratio so like here there's a lot of white and a little black but you could go the opposite way and have a lot of black and a little white and that still looks good so those are the the basics of what I do when I first set up um, my most basic composition that's that okay the next thing is that I like to have things in Z's or Z's if you're in America it's a Z if you're in somewhere else it's a Z but uh, what I mean by that is let's say I had mountains right well people often do mountains like this right and great but now this sort of can flatten out you can either do it like that where it's like okay these are mountains and there's just they're flat it's it's two-dimensional or you could do this thing where uh, you create like a Z shape composition kind of like that it doesn't have to be a Z it could be this way 
just anything that goes like that. And the advantage to that is things come towards you. So by that I mean, okay, so let's say this mountain overlaps this mountain. Okay, but then this mountain overlaps this mountain. So now see, you have like this, the beginning of a Z, and then you could have this overlap this. And then this can overlap as well. Maybe this overlaps that. But see, now we have depth. We have things going into the image with like the Z. Um, and another way about that is just to bring certain things forward, right? So instead of this being flat and you just got like almost like flat pyramids like that. Do, 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 do. Just doing the shadow side of these mountains. So that's very boring. Instead, you just bring some of them out. Like so. And when I started, I had a lot of trouble with this. Um, most of what I learned from landscape painting, uh, I don't even know if I learned it, but I watched a ton of Bob Ross. And he would do this thing where he'd take mountains and he'd start, like, just a, what I did, right? Like a, a shape. But then he'd, like, bring them forward. See how this one now looks like it's coming forward in three dimensions? And I could never understand, like, or it took me a really long time to understand just how to do that. Um, and so I'm not really sure how I would uh, advise others on how to do that. It's just something that you kind of get once you... Once you draw a lot and you understand form, um, it becomes easier to to visualize how certain things might be in three dimensions. And it's like, okay, so now this mountain range is, it's got some depth to it, right? Parts are coming towards us. And then another way of depth is to create things in the background. You know, just more layers. More layers is good. And to break things up. So that's another thing. If you want, so what have we learned so far? Uh, high horizon, low horizon. Those are good. Uh, a lot of positive or night. How do we say it? Uh, bias. Bias toward positive, positive, or sorry for my horrible <laughs> negative space, and things coming at you in the Z axis. Things in Z axis. Um, something else is having overlap. Overlap is really good. Oops. Overlap, overlapping things. So that just creates depth. And okay, so that's that's thumbnails, right? With thumbnails, you're just creating. It's almost easier for me to just find one of these and just go boom. Okay, you're just creating like shapes, right? This is a good exercise too. Just create a bunch of these boxes and then fill them with shapes. Like, oh, what does that look like? Um, what if we do the opposite? You know, play around and experiment. <clears throat> but once you have this and you want to do a painting, well, how'd you go about doing that? Well, for me, I tend to start with the sky. And that's the, the air, right? The atmosphere. So I get big brushes and I just block in a tone. And it doesn't have to be skies in blue when I use a tone. Pretty much can be anything. Um, but it's got to feel like what I want and it's also okay to have some color variation in this Now let's say I just did that. Okay, so now I got some basic atmosphere Now with this I can create a bunch of stuff because Let me just get rid of some of this and this and Just focus on this so now I have air, right? So then what I tend to do, because I don't know much with landscapes, so I just know a few tricks, is I usually grab my lasso tool and I usually go for mountains 
that's my next thing, it just create layers of mountains. And the reason I use the lasso tool is because it gives me this like crisp, crisp edge. Um, and also because of that, I can do this thing where, okay, let's say I'm not using lasso tool. I'm just going to grab a chalk brush because chalk, any, any textured brush is really nice for a landscape. Let's say that. Anyway, I grab that and then I pick a color and I always pick the sky color and I'm going to go to maybe a darker, slightly darker tone. It's like, okay, so let's say I do this. It's like, yeah, that's okay for mountains. And then I need to sort of fade it off, right? As it gets closer to the ground because you've got more atmosphere down here. Right? So it's like, oh, there we go, a mountain range. Well, the thing is, we get... It's a bit hard to blend this. But if I take a lasso tool, then I make a shape. Let's say this is a mountain, whatever. And I can just take my brush and then do like these downward strokes. Down, 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 down. And it kind of... Like, I'm doing it really quick. I'd probably take a bit more time. Let me just go over it one more time. But see how doing these downward strokes, what happens is automatically it gets lighter towards the bottom. And so then it's like, I okay, so I have that. And I can make another mountain range. Do, 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 do. And, oops, need to redo that. There and just take an even darker color and create another another range and then you get like depth right it's like ooh, we're going deep into the distance so that's why i like to use the lasso tool um what else can i talk about oh creating shapes like see the mountain ranges i created there's something i guess could be useful and that is not to create even spacing on things like when you do a mountain you don't want to go do 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 but there's this tendency especially for beginners to want to do this it's actually kind of difficult to create random shapes see so i'm going like up a bit and down and up and then out of the page and oh down again and like this can be a bit difficult also creating shapes that you know there's often people will do mountains and they do them too tall like that whereas often when you look at them they're much more subtle especially if you're far away or they're not that big you often get much more subtle peaks like so but anyway that's something to practice with is to you know be able to get it so you can um, do these in a more random way and it's the same as when you you paint stars if you've ever painted stars it's important to uh, create randomness to to those things uh, you don't want to just be going like do 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 because that doesn't look random right that looks like they're in a pattern you want to you want to create it so it's like yeah there's a few stars here there may be a space and some down here and here because you know like constellations and stuff right you you create areas and that sort of makes things more random um and then another thing i can talk about is okay so i created the mountains and i purposely made them like a bit darker than the sky color and that's because when i think about it what i think is sort of this just gonna fill this whole thing with this so let's say this is the sky right this is the atmosphere what I think of is this is actually in front of me and as there's less atmosphere you start to see things emerge but there's still more atmosphere between you and what's further back so now see these mountains look really far and then as they get revealed it's almost like we're getting closer and closer, right? Because there's less atmosphere between us and the mountains. So because of that, anything that's far away, it's going to be closer to the sky color. 
That's how I think of it anyway. Um, yeah, it's going to be closer to the sky color. Because, let's say right now we're in daytime. or Okay, so then the sky is this like bluish green, whatever. But if it was nighttime, then the mountains would get closer to whatever the nighttime color is. Like the black or dark blue. So there's that. And the other thing is atmosphere tends to settle, you know, down. Uh, so when I create, like, let's say I created that range, then I'll often go in and create atmosphere at the bottom. And I always use a big soft brush for this. See? Creates like a misty thing. And that's very useful because then you can go in and make your next layer of whatever mountains. Let's just make one more mountain range. It usually looks better to have more than just two ranges, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna make one more. And as we get closer, this gets darker, but it also gets towards whatever the mountain's actual color is, because right now we're very much thinking about um, the sky, right? Like this looks closer to the sky's color. I'm like, okay, so let's say there's that. And what else? Maybe the light side of this mountain is. I don't know. Oh, that's not working at all. That's not working. Maybe like that? I don't know. But the point is that it gets closer to the color of the thing that it it actually is its local color as you get closer towards you and it also gets more saturated so let's say I had um, grass let's just add some grass well at first when I go and add grass I'm gonna make it like if it's far away it's gonna be closer to the skies color it's gonna be less saturated um, lower in or it's gonna be like closer to a middle value but then as we get closer to the camera you can get more and more saturated and that makes things look like they're coming towards you and so now it sort of looks like I don't know you've got like a lot of space between you and these distant um, this distant mountain it feels like there's some space on you I don't know um, but yeah I'm nearing the end of of the tricks those are those are the main tricks I use uh, whenever I have to do landscapes um, trees and stuff I don't really have much advice about that um, I like to use some custom brushes there's like a smoke brush and I have links to all my brushes on on the resources section of my forum but it's like yeah when I make clouds just use like a brush like this and it's quick and easy clouds um, what else Usually I have some very dark things in the foreground, uh, maybe like trees or something, but just to create space. So it's, you know, it's like, okay, we've got, we've got at least three layers of depth here. Um, you got this area, then you got trees, and you got mountains. Um, I usually have a focal point on a third, so you were to divide this into thirds like so somewhere like there 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 um, what else in this because because I've got green and it's very bright usually what that means is that you've got a white light like your your light is uh, closer to white meaning there's all the colors in it so as opposed to like in a sunset, you probably wouldn't have these greens. They probably move towards oranges more. So because of that, um, I'm allowed to make the sky bluer. So whenever you have like white light, it usually means um, 
that you can move towards what you think the color is. For instance, if you think of a ball and it's a red ball, right? Well, what color is that ball? Well, red. Uh, and what color is red? Maybe you just think, you know, uh, well, red is red. Here, there's red. Lots of red ball. But depending on what the light is, that's going to look different. And something to keep in mind is like, imagine... Okay, let's say we had a green ball, right? Ooh, it's green, right? Wow, that's green. Imagine you were in... You know when uh, you're in an emergency and then all the lights turn off, but then the red lights come on? Maybe you've only seen it in movies. But when that happens, this ball that's green is not going to look like that. It's probably going to look like that under red light. So that's why it's important to understand what your light is. And I tried to explain this a bit in my found Foundations of Light series. Um, but anyway, so, so yeah. And I'm getting rid of the trees here. And the reason is... I want this to actually overlap this because I like more depth and I want to have more saturation so that it's like okay there's that and then another thing you can do is have some life and usually people just put birds because birds are the easiest form of life and movement you know it's like okay just birds yay we got birds and then it feels like whoa there's there's stuff going on and have like overlapping stuff and maybe some these birds are catching the light but there's some birds that don't so there's these ones that aren't catching the light do 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 and you can give things a flow so like the birds aren't just like do 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 they're maybe in a flow going in a certain direction I did way too many birds you wouldn't do this many birds um, maybe there's a goat hmm. there's too too light there's a goat here I don't know what a goat looks like so I'm just gonna do this and um, that's a goat now uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing I'm so nervous it's it's really this feeling of not knowing what I'm talking about and trying to make a tutorial. Um, perhaps I should just stop now. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. How about we stop? And I just gonna quickly add some water down here, cause sure, why not? You know, water is always really nice. And again, keep a flow to it. You know, like don't just. Like, I'm, if I'm going to make it, I'm not just going to do that. Make a puddle of water. I mean, you could, but I kind of want to have a flow to these things. And um, maybe have some more mist. Because mist is always great, right? It's like, wow, there's so much mist at the base of this mountain. That's so misty. Thanks for watching.